Hello, this is Alex from LearnBeachVolleyballFast.com. In this video, we're going to take a deeper look at analyzing beach volleyball video for learning from it. There's going to be a lot of tips and tricks, both technical on how to do it easier, but also sort of how to extract the most value out of the video that we're watching so that we actually do learn from it. But before we even get started, Let's have a look at why we should do this in the first place. Is video analysis even important? So one of these points I'm going to talk about is value per hour invested into something. Because if our general idea is that we want to learn beach volleyball, we want to become as good as possible, as quick as possible. Well, there's an efficiency factor. It's not only about how many hours we put into our practice. It's also what do we do with these hours? Because if we spend a lot of hours but don't extract value from it, does it make us so much better? Maybe not. So analyzing video is a great tool. It's not the only tool, but it's a great tool to know that we're staying on track, to know that we are practicing the right thing that will make us go to the next level. It's also a great tool to analyze and see pros and see what they do different so that we can then start seeing the differences between ourselves and the pros and how can we become more like the pros. So yeah, basically what I'm telling here is that it's not always a given that you should be on the court. It's not always a given that the most efficient thing you can do right now to become a better player is to go to the volleyball court. Sometimes the best thing is to just sit down at your computer and watch some video. <laughs> but of course, we need to go to the court later. We cannot only analyze video and think that we're going to become good from that. But uh, a balance is always good. Another thing that goes well in hand with this is that analyzing video is uh, independent of weather or physical exhaustion. Because at times you might be tired, you might have play every day for a week in a row or whatever or it might be raining it might be snowing or whatever uh, and you can't play well you can still do things that will make your progress as a volleyball player go forward and um, that's a great thing with video video analysis it's not as dependent on on certain things that other practice methods are dependent on third why it might be good to do video analysis is that if you would want to become a coach one day, uh, maybe during your playing career or afterwards, um, video analysis is going to help with that because you have seen and thought and analyzed more, which will mean that you're better prepared to do that even more in the future. Um, I might think that it's a good idea to become a coach while you're a player because I actually think that can uh, accelerate your learning as a player as well just because you need to think more about these things uh, I might make another video about that sometimes in the future how to think how to make that as efficient as possible but for now I think it's enough to know that if you start analyzing video already now more and more efficiently that's going to help you in the future and the fourth maybe a little bit unexpected benefit from video analysis is that it can actually help you with your mental game as well if you do the video analysis in the right way with some specific mindset things, it will actually help you with your psychology that will then translate into more efficient practices and easier gameplay. So let's get started. So let's get started and let's start with analyzing others, analyzing pro players and whatnot, because um, this is something everyone can do. As soon as we have access to YouTube, we have hours and hours and hours of footage that we can analyze and we'll never run out of <laughs> material to analyze. So first, a technical thing. YouTube is actually a way better video player than many people recognize because we actually have YouTube, we can choose the speed. So here's normal speed, uh, but for analyzing slow motion is sometimes good. So 
this is in Swedish here, but I go to settings, speed, and for example, 0 0.5. So now it's playing at half speed. Another good thing is that on my keyboard, on my computer keyboard, I have forward and backwards buttons that rewinds it or, or fast forwards at five seconds. So this means that I can actually, let's say, let's say I want to watch this jump serve here. I can do it over and over and over again very easily. I just click back every time it goes. So that was YouTube Video Player 101. Now let's let's say that we want to know some technique that we don't know yet. So let's take this jump serve, a jump float serve here as an example. It's it's very easy as a human being when we watch volleyball, when we watch something interesting, to start watching it as entertainment. We just want to watch the game, see who wins, uh, do they do anything cool, you know, there's a block that's kind of an interesting save uh, and whatnot. So it's very easy to forget about all of the analyzing that we were supposed to do in the first place. So this is mental skill number one actually to be able to do the analyzing work rather than get distracted and start watching the game. But now, let's say that we are good at that now. So we're actually going to analyze this, this jump float technique here. Uh, I'm going to point out two, two details of this technique because we can only watch one thing at a time. So for me, if I'm now watching his footwork when he does this jump float, he takes a left, right, left, he takes a left, right, left. Okay, so now I know that. But as I see that, it's hard for me to see, for example, what he does with his arms. So let's try to focus on his arms a little bit. He tosses the ball. Okay, let's first take, when does he toss the ball? So he takes a left step, he takes a left step, tosses the ball, takes a right left. So it's left, toss, right, left. Do, 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 do. So now we have analyzed two things and put them together. We know what his steps are and then when he tosses the ball. Let's look even more at his arms. Um, a spiking motion and a jump serve, a topspin jump serve. Um, often people swing their arms behind their backs to get to jump higher and hit harder and whatnot. But Emmanuel here is leaving his arms sort of in front of his body, actually, uh, for the jump float. So that might be interesting if we haven't noticed that before. Um, that could be a pretty crucial technical thing for for jump floating so but at the same time when we watch his arms well now we're forgetting about his footwork so <laughs> this is why it's so good to be able to replay and replay and replay and focus on different aspects of the movement until we have the sort of whole picture and of course we could go as deep as we want we could watch at his watch his core what angle is it in uh, blah, blah, blah. We could even figure out what way his cap is. Is it backwards, forwards? And at one point, these details that we can analyze are maybe not going to be relevant anymore. So how do we know what's relevant and what's not relevant? Um, in technique, there's going to be important things and then there's going to be less important things. So if we would now, now we sort of have a picture of what Emmanuel looks like when he does this. If we would go and watch many other pros and watch their jump floats, we could start looking for common denominators. Basically, what are they doing? What are they all doing that's the same? 
And if we find those things, well, now we can probably start assuming that there's a reason why they do it. We don't necessarily know why they do it yet, but at least we have sort of a, an idea that most probably this is something that we should look further into. And our analyzing work is, is way ahead from where it was before. Another thing about analyzing videos on YouTube like this is how is the match filmed? So, and this goes back to analyzing versus um, entertainment, because this video here from the London Olympics, it's, uh, there's a filmer. It's filmed for maximum pleasure for the viewer. So the camera moves where the ball goes, and it's sort of nicer to watch than a static camera. However, this creates a problem if we want to analyze sometimes, because what if I want to analyze what the German guys do before their serve receive? Well, I can't see it in this video, at least not from this angle. I might be able to find another place in this same match where they have a different camera angle where I get that information, but that's kind of annoying and it's going to take a lot of time. So for analyzing, actually, sometimes it's better to watch games like this that are filmed on a tripod because here I can, these two players here, I can actually analyze what they are doing uh, before their server save. Let's do some slow motion here again. And uh, let's see. Now we're back on track. So here we see that they do some sorts of they both actually seem to do some sorts of movements, kind of back and forth, left and right, before they even serve receive. Um, is this an important detail? Is there any reason to do that? Well, we don't know yet, but we could uh, technically go on and see other pros, uh, what they do before their serve receive, and then sort of try to know if, if that's a common thing that pros do or not. Two more things about analyzing others. So first of all, I forgot to say that in this video I have been analyzing technique more than strategy or or anything else. Uh, but of course, these same techniques can and tips and tricks can be used for analyzing strategy, or it can be analyzed for scouting uh, opponents if you have video of uh, whoever you're gonna play against or or whatnot. Uh, but we're not gonna jump into that in this video. One technical thing, <laughs> I went actually back and analyzed what I've recorded so far in this video, and I realized that I completely got on reloop. I was talking and replaying this, this jump float serve of Emanuel's uh, millions of times as I was speaking, uh, which was almost sort of a little bit annoying. Uh, but there's one thing about learning technique that many people don't know. Uh, research has shown, so I'll just continue re replaying this here while I speak because there's a reason for it. Reasons ha research has shown that there's a part of our brain that copies what it sees. So later when we're going to talk more about building technique, we're going to learn that it's, uh, it's about building neural pathways in our brains. Uh, our brains actually rewire themselves when we learn new technique and new ways to do things. But watching someone do something in a specific way, our brains actually already start doing this for us. This means that just watching this over and over here, we are actually in our brains building pathways to do a jump float serve like Emmanuel does which is sort of interesting and can definitely be used as a part of your practice to learn new technique. Um, this, um, I think this works especially good with kids, with children. Um, there's been instances where children that have become very good even have small ticks, like small details in the technique that are completely irrelevant with uh, 
playing well uh, that they have translated from pros that they have watched when they were small which is quite interesting and when you ask them they have no idea that they're doing those things um, but even if we're adults and later in our lives and uh, have a little bit more rigid brains we still have very flexible brains uh, which means that we can still use this tool here so now just from repeating this video the chances that the next time you or me go and do a jump float serve um, the chances are that it's going to be a little bit more like Emmanuel here, <laughs> actually. So there you go. That was some thoughts about analyzing others, analyzing pros. And uh, I watched and this is uh, already getting lengthy. I like going deep into topics. So this will not be one video. It will become a video series. Uh, in the next uh, part, I will talk about analyzing yourself and your own footage and uh, there will probably also be a third part where i talk about analyzing people in real life in uh, in real time i'd uh, highly suggest you go and watch both of those two because there are going to be details in those that you can also use in analyzing pros uh, but it's going to make more sense for me to explain those when we analyze ourselves but for now, I hope this video has given you some new insights and ideas that you didn't have before that will help you with your volleyball game. Uh, the idea with this YouTube channel is I want to go deep into topics that will help people become better volleyball players uh, that I haven't seen anyone discuss anywhere. Uh, I haven't seen a YouTube channel like, like this that goes in depth into things and discusses the whys and underlying reasons and strategies that don't maybe always seem intuitive um, and stuff like that. So I hope you're enjoying it. And um, if you want, please click the like button for me. That would help me a lot uh, with producing, continuing producing these videos. And um, if you want more of this in the future, you should uh, click the subscribe button as well. And uh, on top of that, I do have a Facebook group uh, where you would be able to discuss with me and ask for videos and come with ideas and so on and so on. And it's going to be the best w place to follow this uh, Learn Beach Volleyball Fast project overall. So um, there will be a link uh, on the screen here now. Uh, click that and join the Facebook group if you really want to be a part of this uh, project. All right, thanks and see you in the next part.